siku jambo mtazamaji na karibu kwa taarifa za mbili ya KTN jina langu ni Mashirima Kapombe wasimamizi wa tume ya kupambana na ufisadi wamefika mbele ya kamati ya bunge kuhusu sheria kufafanua utaratibu wa uzaji wa jumba la integrity kamati hiyo imetaka kujua ni njia gani zilizotumiwa kutathmini ubora wa jumba hilo ili kuuziwa serikali kwa kima cha shilingi milioni 115 tofauti na milioni laki nane uh, milioni laki nane ambacho tofauti na milioni laki nane kumi na tatu kilichotajwa hapo awali aidha afisa mkuu mtendaji wa tume hiyo halake wako amekanusha madai ya wabunge hao kuwa jumba hilo ni mali ya umma na uzaji wake kwa kiwango hicho ulikuwa ni matumizi mabaya ya pesa za umma Remember Rivak is under receivership and Rivak was already the owner of that property that we call integrity center which they had bought with some borrowing we have no problem but as a committee we must be satisfied that what you saw is also correct is it because we are, we are undertaking an investigation also it does not rest with you you know that you know these are the people's representatives so you do it on our behalf because all of us cannot fit into ECC so you are here to give us those documents so that we can also be satisfied the property is and is being lifted from receivership and is being discharged and therefore being transferred we as the public we would want to know that that property at the point of transfer that it was valued at the value of the public money that this 400 million was not a payment for a song so we are interested to find out uh, how that valuation was done when they paid the 115 million shillings how much was outstanding as at that time because you have not told us how much was outstanding as at um i believe must have been on or uh, 2nd of april 2013 was that what was the outstanding there not what was paid was what you have given us is the total payment today or as at that time was 471 million shillings what was the outstanding balance as at 2nd of april 2013 so that um rafa pays or was agreed between dpf and rafa to pay 115 million shillings as of that time was about 813 million that that is what was outstanding as of that date and that is what they entered into negotiation with uh Rivak with that figure <laughs> if it is established that these people took off with 800 million it doesn't matter what documentation is developed between them and central bank or whoever if the 800 million it doesn't go back to the taxpayers plus the interest accruing over the years that uh, this matter has been uh, in abeyance Kuingineko hali ya wasiwasi imekumba chama cha Waipa kufuatia hatua ya jana ya gavana Machakos kutoa ishara za kutaka kuanzisha vuguvugu jipya la kisiasa ili kunyakuwa uongozi wa eneo zima la ukambani duru za kuaminika kutoka chama cha Waipa zinasema wakuu wa chama hicho wamelalamikia vikali mkutano wa gavana Mutua hapo jana katika eneo la Athiriva Jeff Kirui anarifu Mchakato wa kisiasa unaendelea kupamba moto eneo la ukambani huku baadhi ya viongozi wakipanga mikakati ya kumwidhinisha gavana wa Machakos daktari Alfred Mutua kuwa kiongozi wa ukambani. Iti yetu ya Kenya ina siasa aina mbili. Kuna siasa ya maendeleo na kuna siasa ya mdomo. Sisi tumeamua ya kwamba mahali tulipo kama Afrika na iti yetu tuna shida nyingi sana. Kwa sababu viongozi wameanza siasa ya kusukumana na ukubwa wakasahau ya kwamba mwananchi pale chini anataka maendeleo. Tuitane, tuite zote. Tayarisha kikao cha wakamba wote viongozi waliochaguliwa kwa sababu najua wabunge wako aina mbili. Kuna standing MPs na sitting MPs. Hata hao standing MPs waite. Uwaite, tukae pamoja, tuzungumze kama wakamba tuone tutaenda wapi. 
Gavana Mutua amekuwa kishtumiwa kwa kuasi chama cha Waipa huku viongozi wanaomuunga mkono kiranja wa chama hicho Kalonzo Musyoka wakimtaja kuwa msaliti. Mama yule pia akani nilikuwa nasoma nilikuwa nasikia mtu akikosa macho anaweza nunua miwani aone. Mimi na chindango mudama anavaa miwani ya kumsaidia kuona ama ni ya nini kama aone hii maendeleo yote. Hiyo miwani lazima tumchangie. Tumkafie miwani ambayo inaona. Mtu akiweka mataa kutoka machakos mpaka makutano mataa zinawaka usiku akimudama aone. Akiweka lami kule anaenda kusema hiyo lami aliiko na mashimu na kumbe mlama alikamtoa vijana wakachimba na shuruli sisi hatutaki ka siasa nduri la kupigana ukisikia mtu anapigana muulize wewe umefanya nini na mahali popote ambapo pako na mkamba ambao amekusanyika kwa sababu ya nia moja kuendesha ukamba wetu mbele kuendesha Kenya yetu mbele mimi nitakuwa pale. Mtu anapigiwa upatu kuchukua hatamu za uongozi ukambani huku charitingilo akionekana kuegemea upande wa Kalonzo Musyoka. Jeff Kirui KTN News. Rais Uhuru Kenyatta amefungua rasmi kongamano la wabunge kutoka mataifa wanachama wa jumuiya ya Madola. Kongamano hilo ambalo ni la 46 limewaleta pamoja washirika 400 ambapo masuala ya demokrasia yamejitokeza katika hotuba ya Rais Uhuru Kenyatta. Mwanahabari wetu Francis Mtanaki anaungana nasi hivi sasa kutoka studio zetu katikati mwa jiji la Nairobi. Mtalaki tueleze ni masuala gani yaliyojadiliwa haswa katika hotuba ya Rais leo. Na asante sana Mashirima Rais Uhuru Kenyatta ameweza kugusia mambo mawili muhimu moja likiwa ni kuhusiana na demokrasia na swali onekana kuegemea upande wa upinzani akisema kwamba katika karne hii basi ni sharti um, upinzani uweze kupewa nafasi kuwa uh, na anaweza kuchangia katika swala nzima la maendeleo katika uh, wanachama hawa ambao ni ni ni, 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 ni muungano wa, wa, wa kongamano la la mataifa ambayo ni jumuiya ya madola na anasema kwamba iwapo upinzani basi itakuwa na hoja ambayo ni, 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 ni ya maendeleo basi ni sharti taifa hilo ambayo ni lolote katika mataifa ya 18 basi liweze kusikizwa na jambo lingine aliweza kugusia ambayo lilikuwa na msisimko kidogo ni kuhusiana na wakoloni akisema kwamba zile sera ama kanuni ambao walikuwa wakizitumia kitambo basi zi, e, kwa upande fulani walikuwa wakizitekeleza wakizit, na anasema kwamba ka, katika karne hii basi ni sharti kama bara bara la Afrika tuweze kuunda sera na kanuni ambazo zinazambatana na bara Afrika na labda kwa kumalizia tu mambo ambayo yanatazamiwa ku jadiliwa katika kipindi hiki ambayo kwa kongamano hili litakuwepo hadi tarehe 15 masuala ya demokrasia na, ku, na, na ubunifu na maendeleo ni mambo ambayo yanatazamiwa ku, 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 kuchukua mkondo na vile vile ile swala la baada ya malengo ya ruwaza ya mwaka 2015 je kama wanachama ni nini ambacho ni nini ambacho wanapaswa basi kushughulikia mashirima na asante sana Francis Mtalaki kutokana na muda hatutakuacha uonge sana taarifa kwa kina bila shaka tuweza kuipata mwendo wa saa moja katika taarifa zetu za KTN leo. Kwengineko viongozi wa chama cha Kanu wametupilia mbali pendekezo la kukijumuisha chama hicho na vyama vingine katika muungano wa Jubilee. Viongozi hao wamesema iwapo uamuzi wowote kuhusu chama hicho kuingia katika muungano huo utafanyika lazima yafanywe mashauriano ya wakuu wa chama na wanachama wengine seneta wa pokoti magharibi profesa john lonyangapuo ni mmoja wa wale wanaokosoa mpango huo this thing being formed called jubilee alliance party is a new party new that is going to join in the league of tna in the league of urp kanu udf and many others almost 10 parties that form the coalition of Jubilee. In the event that President Uhuru Kenyatta forms another one called JAP, he will have to have a working arrangement with Kanu for him to continue getting our votes as it were. And that one we are sure if he decides to walk to stand in TNA or JAP, he will come to us. But at never 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 ever will there be a time when he will dictate to us kill your kanu and come 
if he goes that direction, he will actually be saying he's not going to be the president of the Republic of Kenya because he deletes his own votes from these other partners. But if URP winds up and TNA winds up to join J JAP, who told you everybody is going to be hard like goats? Who will walk there? Na mtukiachana na hayo basi hii leo kumekuwa na mkutano ya, wa viongozi wa chama cha ODM katika makao makuu ya chama hicho na mwanahabari wetu uh, Patrick Amimo yuko katika eneo hilo Patrick Amimo tueleze labda ni mambo gani ambayo yamejadiliwa yame katika kikao hicho cha leo Asante sana Mwasherima Uh, kikao hiki cha chama ya kamati ya ODM katika makao yao makuu kimeanza mwendo wa saa 8:30 hivi ambapo sasa ni takriban saa moja au nusu mkutano bado unaendelea na baadhi ya masuala ambayo yamepelekea kuwepo kikao hiki ni kwamba chama cha ODM kinapanga kufanya uchaguzi wa mashinani kote nchini kuanzia tarehe tisa ya mwezi huu Agosti na kabla kwenda kwenye kura hizi chaguzi hizi za mashina ilikuwa ni vema chama kiweze kutathmini maswala kadha hasa kutuepo lile swala na wale wanachama ambao walikihama chama wapate chaguzi za mashinani mwaka 2013 ambapo walihama chama baada ya kushindwa kupata nyadhifa kwenye chama hicho na, na kuna pia baadhi ya wabunge ambao labda wanachama ambao licha kuchaguliwa kwenye chama cha ODM wamekuwa kionyesha ukupendelea uh, ama kuunga mkono vyama tofauti hasa tuseme kama ule mrembo wa serikali wa GBD kwa hivyo kabla kuelekea kura hizi za mashinani uh, chama kimeona kije kipigie hili swala msasa kioni ni wapo wanachama hawa wataruhusiwa kushiriki kwenye chaguzi hizi kumbuka uh, baada ya hawa wanachama kuhama chama cha ODM walihamia na vingine na ili kuweza kuruhusiwa kushiriki katika uchaguzi huu itabidi waonyeshe kuwa wamekuwa na chama wa ODM kwa zaidi ya miezi miwili hivyo ni kulingana na sheria za chama cha ODM kwa hivyo iwapo wanachama hawa wataruhusiwa kuja kushiriki katika chaguzi hizi itahitajika ita, ita wawe na barua kutoka kwa msajili wa vyama kuonyesha kuwa wamevitema vyama ambavyo walikuwa wamehamia uh, ili wapate fursa ya kuja kushiriki katika chaguzi za ODM na pia kwa wale ambao wamekuwa kiasi chama haswa sana wakipenda kuunga mkono cha vyama vinavyo kwenye mlengo wa serikali hasa vyama vya jubilee hasa kule kuna baadhi ya wanachama kutoka mko, wa, wabunge kutoka mkoa wa Pwani eh, maeneo ya magharibi ambapo pia wameonyesha nia yao sana kushirikiana kwa karibu na serikali na hivyo kutosukumiza ajenda za chama cha ODM wanachama kama hawa wapo wataka kushiriki katika uchaguzi huu pia watapigwa mstafa na ndipo wanakamati hao wamefika hapa kutathmini hili swala ili kujua ni wapo wanaelekea uchaguzi mkoa mwaka na saba wawe na wanachama ambao wana waunga chama kwa dhati ili isiye ni njia ya kuumba yumba kumbuka kinara wa chama hiki Raila Odinga anania ya kuania urais mwaka na saba ambao itakuwa ni mara yake ya nne na labda ya mwisho na anataka kabla kuingia kwa labda kushiriki kwenye jimba hili awe anajua ana ufuati uh, thabiti kumbuka kabla hata hajatoa tiketi ya chama cha kodi itabidi aweze kuwa na wanachama wake wale wa, 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 wa chini yake hiyo iko tafiko shwari ili akikabiliana na wenzake labda wa katika eneo la chama cha Waipa na ama Ford Kenya ili atiwashawishi akisema mimi ndiye wa kwanza ambao anaweza labda kuibuka kibedai wapo tukaenda kwenye eh, mashukuchuano na rais huyu kwenye mwaka mbili na kumi na saba kwa hivyo hayo ni masuala ambao wanajaribu kutafsiri hapa mashirini Asante sana Patrick Amimo kutokana na muda itabidi nikukatize kidogo lakini mtazamaji tuweza kupata tathmini na, na hisia kamili mwendo wa saa moja baada ya mkutano huo mwendo wa saa moja tutakuletea taarifa kamili kuhusiana na mkutano huo wa kamati ya chama cha ODM. Nitakomea hapo kwa sasa Mary Kilogi ataendelea na taarifa za leo mashinani kwenye KTN News.